Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is a new IFBB Classic Physique Pro. Just won his class at the USA Championships. The man I'm talking about is Duran Trotter. Welcome. Thanks, Dave. Like, uh, thanks to be here, and I uh, appreciate you guys having me on the show. Yeah, you know, uh, you're at work, obviously, Liberty Mutual. Tell us, uh, before we get to the body, what do you do at Liberty Mutual? you sell uh, insurance? No, uh, I'm actually an auditor. So uh, I pretty much audit files for our claims adjusters and uh, just make sure we're not uh, overpaying or underpaying our customers and make sure we pretty much stand in line with our uh, estimates. Oh, so um, you're, you're the guy we dread coming out when we get you know we get damaged to the house, and then you you got to come out and assess what it is, right? <laughs> well, that's what I actually, that's that's an adjuster. I pretty much oh. audit our adjusters. Oh, so you're you're so make sure so you're that. Gotcha. Yeah, I make sure our adjusters are doing the right thing. How long have you been doing the job? Uh, I've been with Liberty for about seven years now, and um, uh, I've been an auditor for two. How do you learn how to do that? What like what, what what do you base that skill? You don't go to school for that, obviously. Do they just teach you on the job there? No, uh, we actually uh, we actually have like a mock house, like uh, um, and where there's like damage everywhere, and they take us throughout the house and we assess the damages and kind of just write estimates and we meet with contractors and they teach us a lot uh, right. as far as like how you know what type of damage is uh, there and how to write for an estimate for it. So. It's kind of things that you learn over time um, and just learn on the job as well. Now, what I always w wonder, this has nothing to do with bodybuilding, of course, but I, I have to ask questions when I actually find experts in, in areas that I know nothing about. When there's like a huge, crazy hurricane, like when I was in, uh, in New York and we got hit with Hurricane Sandy, like every, not, not one house, but every house in the entire, you know, Nassau County was, was destroyed basically and, or, or damaged. How, how do insurance companies recover from like you know crazy stuff like that? Uh, insurance companies got deep pockets, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we we actually work those type of ish, those uh, storms in our budget. Oh, really? So, you know, we don't. You know, I mean, hurricanes. I mean, we we get over pretty quick. Yeah, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about your bodybuilding. You started back in, I believe it was 2014 with competing. Uh, you obviously were track, we talked a little earlier, you were track and field athlete, a sprinter. Um, how did you go from sprinting to bodybuilding? Well, um, ever since I was younger, I would say about you know 14 years old, my dad, uh, he pretty much pushed me to play sports, uh, football, track, basketball. And I wasn't always the tallest guy on the team, so he always used to tell me that I need to be the strongest and the fastest on any team, any sport. So um, I've always been lifting weights, and then from tra um, track just kind of just took over. That was my passion. Um, I actually got a scholarship in track um, and um, went on a full ride there. Um, and from there, <clears throat> my senior year, or actually starting my junior year, uh, I pulled my hamstring uh, both of them, actually. And then my senior year, I pulled my hamstring again. And so uh, from there, I just kind of decided just to leave track aside. My whole goal was to go try to go pro in that. And then I just kind of just transitioned from track to sport, I mean, to uh, weights because, I mean, it was kind of built in my blood since I was 14. So right. from there, I just kind of started just working out. You know, it's funny because when pe people always say nonchalantly, all track athletes say, oh, I pulled my hamstring. When you, when you say you pulled your hamstring, you tore the hamstring muscle, and that's really, so it's not like something you can get over in a week. You know, people think that, oh, you pulled your hamstring, you'll be better for next week, you know, no big deal. Doesn't work like that, right? Oh, not at all, man. I was out, each time I pulled my hamstring, I was at least out for about six weeks. Wow. And having to do rehab, and then once you came back, I mean, it was still, that, that lingering pain was always there. So I will always have to wrap my leg up and, you know, I think you know, obviously it hindered my performance. So sure, sure. But why do you think uh, track athletes have such a, a propensity to pulling hamstrings because of the explosiveness of the sprinting itself? I think it's a combination of a lot of things. That and also uh, just overtraining as well. Uh -huh. um, I feel like you know just the constant running and the sprinting and you know pushing out of the blocks. You know that that you know that explosive movement. Uh, tends to, you know, mess with your hamstrings a lot doing that, so. 
And I think it has a lot to do with, with, with dehydration, too. I think a lot of track athletes are walking around dehydrated, which makes the muscles much more likely to, to tear also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would say that as well. I think even bodybuilders, I think a lot of bodybuilders are dehydrated, too, when they train at the gym. I just don't think they get enough electrolytes. I think a lot of bodybuilders are afraid of sodium, and, and mm -hmm. they just don't consume enough. And when you don't have enough sodium, you, you, it's hard to hold on to fluids in your body. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially when it's hot out, you know. I know when you guys were hot, track athletes in the warm weather, you're always drinking Gatorades and stuff like that to try to keep the electrolytes as well as the fluid in your body. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, where uh, where I went, I went to school in Louisiana Tech, so it was always hot and the humidity humidity was terrible there. But I mean, we try everything that we could to try to, try to uh, stay dehydrated. I mean, de uh, hydrated, but it didn't always work that way. Yeah. Now you competed in 14, 15, uh, you took, uh, I think you said you took, oh, you took 15 off because you got married and had uh, some kids, we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, 16, 17 you competed, uh, th this year you won the NPC City Limits overall title uh, and then you decided, hey, I'm going to do the USA, I'm ready for this. Um, did you know going into the season that this was going to be the year you were going to try for your pro card? <laughs> Not at all, man. I mean... To be honest, uh, competing in bodybuilding, I mean, it was kind of like a, a hobby at first. And then, um, you know, it just kind of just transitioned to something I started to take serious, I would say, this year. Um, the plan was just to go to the city limits, um, you know, place top five or whatever. And, you know, I end up winning overall. And right after the show, my coach was like, well, you want to take a stab at USA? And... I was like, sure, why not? So, um, you know, I took like a week or two off, and then we started to prep for that, and, you know, turn pro. You know, and that's not a light decision to take, because, you know, it, it's not cheap to do these big shows. I was talking about the other day. It's 325 bucks, you know, for the application fee. you got to get a hotel. you got to get an airplane uh, flight. you got to, you know, pay for rides and rent the cars and food. So it, it's a big investment financially to go to, and you being a financial guy, you should know it's a big investment financially. You had to believe that you, were, you, you had a good shot. Um, but did you ever imagine in your wildest dreams that you would walk away with an IFBB Pro card? No, actually, uh, I would say towards the end of my prep, um, you know, my coach, I mean, him being my coach, he was like, man, you know, we, we can actually win this thing. But I'm thinking, you know, you're saying it because you're my coach. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. but uh, after, you know, I started getting a lot of uh, feedback from other people. And, you know, my, my confidence kind of built a little bit more. And, um, you know, I, you know, I really, this, this last prep, I really took it serious. I mean, uh, the five o'clock, five o'clock fasted cardio sessions and, you know, the gym and the eating and, um, I really took it serious. So once I got to the show, I saw, and, you know, you kind of peek and look at the, the other competitors and, you know, I started to, my confidence even build more because I felt like I had it. So. Right. Uh, I was feeling good about myself during the show. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great, um, it's, it always feels great when you go there and you feel like, hey, you know what, I belong here, and I got a good shot at winning this, and then you actually do. Uh, now, here's a good question. I, I always ask everyone who I talk to, you know, before the show, when I, in the pre-interview, I say, hey, you know, have you, is there any obstacles that you've overcome or a lot of, you know, hardships to actually get to where you are? And you actually set me right back to reality, and you were 100% right. You're like, man, um, it, it's hard having kids and a full-time job. You got twins, you know. I have one kid at a time. I had two kids, but I had one at a time. You had two at the same time. That's a tough, anyone who doesn't have kids, that's a real tough thing to do. Plus have a full-time job, plus train for a show. How do you do that? How, how do you make the time and manage your, your schedule so that you can get all this done? Um, I, got a, I got a good support team. Um, my wife. I mean, I have to say this, but she pretty much allowed me to do a show. I mean, without her, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, without her, you know, taking the extra time to help prep my meals. Uh -huh. um, you know, she's having to watch the kids while I'm at the gym. Sure. Um, you know, work, going to work early, getting off early sometimes just to kind of, uh, you know, pick up the kids. And while picking them up, eating my meals at the gas station or something, so <laughs> it was, so it was all it was just it was hectic, I would say, but you know it paid off. So, 
Plus, what people don't realize, is, and I, I didn't know this either, that's probably why I didn't have kids for so long. You don't really sleep very much. My, my days of eight, nine hour you know, nights of, of rest have been terminated permanently. I, I'm lucky if I get four hours a night of sleep. I'm sure you're experiencing something similar. Yeah, especially, well, now my kids, they're, they're actually, uh, they turn two on the 29th. So right. we got them to the point where they to pretty much sleep through the night. Oh, that's um, good. You're lucky. <laughs> yeah, so. My we're, son we're still cool. wakes up at two and a half, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we got them there. But as far as, like, naps during the day, that that's, an, I'm not, I can't do that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that was pretty tough. Duran, when's going to be the uh, pro debut next year? So, um. To be honest, I mean, we, we've thrown some dates out there, but nothing's really stuck. So um, we looked at the uh, Omaha. We looked at uh, uh, the Tampa, Tampa Pro. So it's, it's probably going to be out of those two, depending on how I feel and what I look like. All right. Well, congratulations on the Pro card. Congratulations on your, your two children. The great job. And uh, it sounds like everything's in order. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on that Pro stage next year. Yeah, I'm excited to go, and um, we're, we're going to bring it that time. We're going to bring it to the show. Anyone you want to thank before we go? Yeah, um, you know, I want to thank my coach, uh, Stephen Mass. Uh, this guy's really helped me, and um, he believed in me when I didn't. So uh, I feel like he's the, the secret sauce to the whole formula. Right. Uh, and then my opposing coach, Miss Sheila Brown. Uh, she goes by Flexi Brown. But, She's uh, the best. She's the yeah. best. Love it. <laughs> she, she helped me out with my posing, so... Uh, those two, that's, that's my dream team. All right. And that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.